So this is our final example for constraint optimization. So let's look at a firm that's trying to produce something. So the production function is given by Q is equal to 1.5 times K, which is capital, meaning machines, to the 0.6 power, labor, which is people working, to the 0.4 power. So if our budget is $960, the cap price of capital is 6, the price of labor is 2, determine the amounts of labor and capital and maximize output. Estimate the benefit of having an additional dollar in the budget. So here's what we want to think about, is the objective of this, as it says, is to maximize output. So if I were to write out my constraint, I'm going to write out maximize, and I'm going to put this equation right there. That's what I'm trying to maximize. Subject to, is in a sense, a budget constraint. So if for every good capital I spend, I've got to spend $6 times the amount of capital plus $2 times the amount of labor, and that has to be less than or equal to 960. I can't exceed my budget. So that's my constraint optimization problem here. Now I need to insert this into Excel. And so here I'm going to have now capital and labor. I'm actually going to slide these over just a little. And here I have my output equation. So my output equation is equal to 1.5 times capital to the 0.6 power times labor to the 0.4 power. Okay, so I'm going to highlight these just to let me know if those are the ones I'm choosing. Now I have the price of capital, the price of labor, the price of capital is given at 6 and the price of labor is given at 2. And so now my left hand side constraint, my right hand side constraint, my right hand side is 960. My left hand side constraint is simply 6, which is price of K times K plus price of L times L. Alright, so let's suppose that one thing that's interesting is if I produce 0 and 0, because of this function, all right. meaning that if K is zero, the whole thing is zero, I have to produce a little bit of capital or a little bit of labor for any output. So if I spend all my money on machines, I don't actually hire anyone to run the machines, therefore I can't produce anything. And so what we want to do is just put in one and one for capital labor. You see our output. What if we built by two machines? You see our output increases. So what we want to do is to go to data, solver, we want to optimize our output by changing the amount of capital and labor with the constraint that the money we spend on capital and labor has to be less than or equal to our budget that we have. And if I click solve, I'll get 96 and 192. Now a couple things to note is if you start off with zero and zero, for some reason, many times solver does not quite understand this and will do zero, zero. So the way to solve that is just put some numbers in here quickly and to solve it, and you'll get the right answer. Or the other thing to note is that we change our constraint such that it's not less than or equal to, but if we set it exactly equal to, and then click OK, is we're always going to have binding constraints. And so I click OK, and I'll get the right answer that way. All right. But now the next part of the question it asks, determine the amounts of labor and capital. OK, we did that, and maximize output. Estimate the benefit of having an additional dollar in the budget. So how much does our output increase by having our right-hand side constraint increase by one unit? Well, that's exactly what our Lagrange multiplier tells us. I'm going to solve this again. I'm going to run a sensitivity report. And it's 0.192. Or rather, 0.198 or 0.20. So for every dollar increase in my budget, I'll increase output by 0.2. That's very helpful to know, to know how, should I increase my budget and what's the corresponding output.